Are you trying to implement AI tools without a clear system? That's like trying to build a house without blueprints. I've watched business after business pile on AI tools only to create a huge mess. Today I'll show you a battle-tested framework for designing systems that actually work and continue to improve as this technology evolves. You'll see how I use Claude and Perplexity to document, improve, and automate a sales process that has worked really well for me over the years. Not only that, I'm gonna show you how to use these tools to create beautiful visual representations of these systems. A few years ago, I was helping to put on a large software conference in Dublin, Ireland when a stranger told me something out of the blue that would change my life forever. During a private dinner at that event, I was able to connect with some people that were running insanely successful businesses. One guy was running seven successful software businesses simultaneously. I was baffled by this and had to ask him how he did it. He answered me in one word, traction. When I got home, I devoured this book and found the solution to my agency's biggest problem. It wasn't that I didn't have systems, it was that they were overcomplicated. My doctor documentation was so detailed and convoluted that even a minor change would break everything. Plus, I couldn't tell where one system ended and another began. Traction taught me simplicity and helped me to start building robust systems that were adaptable and easy to maintain. And it all starts with gaining an outside perspective on your machine. I love this quote from Ray Dalio. He says that one of the hardest things for people to do is to objectively look down on themselves within their circumstances, i.e. their machine, so that they can act as the machine's designer and manager. Most people remain stuck in the perspective of being a worker within the machine. And I think that really rings true for me and a lot of the people that I work with. So in the book Traction, Gino Wickman says that basically every business operates with around seven core systems. These include marketing, sales, customer retention, accounting, and around three operational systems. Those operational systems are basically how you create the service or product that you deliver. I found this rule of thumb to be incredibly valuable as I get lost inside of all the systems and processes that could be created. Focusing on just seven core systems should be good enough for almost any company up to about 500 individuals. And remember, don't overcomplicate this stuff. Traction has been battle tested with thousands of different organizations and it has worked well across the board. So given that you're going to need a marketing, sales, customer retention, and accounting system, that leaves us with around these three operational systems to figure out. You probably already have a good idea about what these are, but it may be helpful to look at what some industry standards are and what some other companies may be doing. And for that, I'm going to jump right into the cheat sheet. I create a cheat sheet for every single video that I make. These are all instantly available to anybody who supports me on Patreon. There's a link in the description, so check that out if you're interested. We're going to take this first prompt and drop it directly into perplexity to help us identify these operational systems that we may want to implement inside of our organization. So I'm just copying this here and pasting it right into into perplexity. It basically says, help me find the industry standards for the core operational processes for whatever business you're running. I've gone ahead and run that. It's pulled in some great ideas for my content marketing agency, content operations framework, obviously a key one, project management and workflow optimization, huge, and content technology stack. So if you're looking to just get a feel for what the industry standards are for the operational procedures, that's probably a great way to start. You can then follow it up with this prompt by saying, hey, help me identify the best practices for each of the other systems inside of your organization. So going through starting with marketing into sales, customer retention, and accounting. You can drop that prompt right here into perplexity and try to figure out, you know, what are industry best practices for your particular industry for these different systems. Let that rip and see what it pulls back. With this step, you're just trying to figure out what your seven-ish core systems are. You're not documenting or creating the process quite yet. That comes next. But it's important to name these systems and use those same names. Naming is key. I'm going to get into why here in a second. Once you've decided what your seven or eight systems are, you've got the basic scaffolding of your machine, of your entire organization and now it's time to move forward with creating the system blueprints and for these I love this quote I always thought this was a Charlie Munger quote but I found out it's actually an Einstein quote that Charlie Munger would use he says everything should be made as simple as possible but no simpler. With this step, I find that people fall into one of two camps. Often the more creative types of people, they don't have any systems at all, or the more engineering type of people, they have incredibly documented and detailed uh, systems and processes that sometimes, like me, are too detailed and too complex to get any real work done. The book Traction has really helped me thread this needle to get something that is simple, but also very useful. In that book, Gino Wickman talks about having three 
to seven major steps for each of your processes. And you wanna give each step a clear name as well. For each step, he says you wanna have two to five bullet points in plain English that anybody off the street could look at and understand what's going on. And the entire system document should just be somewhere between two and 10 pages long. Some of your operational systems might get a little bit longer, but I think these are good rules of thumb to follow. You wanna think about that 80-20 rule and just make sure that you're getting most of it in there. It doesn't have to be a step-by-step -step click here and drop this here and do this that way. I found out the hard way that no one's gonna read all of that stuff and that it's gonna become irrelevant very quickly. Plus, you can think of these bullet points as things that not only humans could follow, but also instructions for AI. The fastest way I've come up with to do this is just to open up my voice memo app, the normal app that comes on every iPhone, and just talk about a specific system. Then we've got to get a transcript for that, and for me, the easiest way to do that is Notebook LM, where you can just fire up a new notebook. This is just notebooklm.google.com. Add a source, choose a file, and upload. This is my sales process file here that is being uploaded. Since I live in Notebook LM all day long, I just love this easy transcription here. It's also cool to think about having a notebook where you have all of your brain dumps about your different processes. This is nothing fancy, but just me talking through this sales process that gained me a lot of clients over the years. So once you've got this transcript using Notebook LM or another tool, then you just wanna move forward with this prompt here saying, can you help me break down this transcript into three to seven major steps under each step, two to seven bullet points. And you can do this right inside of Notebook LM, but I found that Claude does a much better job. Let me show you how this works. I'm just copying this right into Claude. I like to do these three quotation marks to separate the context from the prompt. Then I'm gonna grab this transcript right out of Notebook LM, copy that right into Claude, close it up with three quotation marks. And I think the Claude 3.7 Sonnet Normal should be fine for this. Here we go. All right, and that has run and created this awesome some very organized, very traction-esque documentation of this process. And that whole thing took probably 10 minutes. And just as a side note, if you're running any sort of a high ticket service business, whether that's a marketing agency or maybe an AI coaching agency, this particular client acquisition method worked wonders for me. When I was running my marketing agency, I would target CMOs of mid to large software companies, and I'd find them by researching different conferences where they would exhibit. I would then pull that exhibitor list into a spreadsheet and have an assistant go through and find the CMOs, names, and LinkedIn profile for those exhibitors. We would then take that LinkedIn information and create personalized letters connecting their interests from their About Us page to our case studies and the services that we'd offer. Then my team and and I would go to each booth and ask for the CMO by name. They were often there or somebody could connect us to them and we'd have this tailored letter that showed exactly how we could help them. This is way more impactful than sending out millions of emails, trust me. I'm gonna share some automation ideas for this system later in the video, but if you're starting an AI coaching company or a marketing agency, this can land you a ton of clients. There's a ton more in the cheat sheet all about this, but basically that's the system that we're working on documenting and automating today. So if you just repeat that process for all of your seven systems, either doing a brain dump into your iPhone, maybe it's with your entire team and converting that into the documentation I just showed you, or maybe it's going out and doing some perplexity searches to see what the industry standards are. In an afternoon, you could easily have a 50 to 100 page document that is exactly all of the systems for running your company. And this is a great starting place for your AI implementations. This is true IP that will really set you apart from your competitors. And if you're working with a team, I think it's really important to bring in whoever is accountable for that particular system and have them build this process themselves. Remember how I spoke about being very clear on the names of each system and even the names of each step? This is critical when you're building software that you use the same names for the different functions of the software and the different objects inside of the software. As you start to implement AI, it's gonna be critical that people and AI systems call these processes and these different steps by those uh, names that are repeated over and over again. You don't wanna call one thing, you know, something one day and something else another day. That's gonna just cause confusion down the road. So make sure that you're very clear on those names and that everybody adheres to those naming conventions. This is gonna save you a ton of time in the optimization and automation steps we're gonna get into next. So here's a quote from Bill Gates that I thought was appropriate. He says, the first rule of any technology used in a business is that automation applied to an effective operation will magnify that efficiency. The second rule is that automation 
efficient applied to an inefficient operation will magnify that inefficiency. And I see that happening over and over again where people are implementing AI and actually going backwards and just wasting a lot of time and not getting anywhere. So the next Claude prompt that I wanna show you here is analyzing your documentation and looking for just any optimizations and improvements. Let's copy and paste this right here into Claude and it has highlighted all sorts of inefficiencies in my sales system. So redundant research steps, excessive personalization, unclear prioritization, etc. And this has given me a ton of great ideas of how to optimize this before I automate it. So this is a critical step working through this. You're going to need to use your own common sense and figure out, you know, what can be uh, optimized and what really doesn't make sense. The AI is not going to get that perfectly, but it's going to give you a lot of ideas and an outside perspective on your system that can really improve it before you start automating it. There's a lot in the cheat sheet about this. For this step, you can really spend a lot of time going through back and forth with the AI, finding different and better ways to do this. You can go back and forth between perplexity and Claude, finding you know exactly how do people in your industry deal with XYZ, any little step in that process and continue to pull that into your process documentation. But remember, always try to stay in those boundaries that are outlined in traction to make sure that your system is agile and adjustable as things change. We know things are changing fast, so flexible, adaptable systems are key going forward. Once you've optimized your system, now you're in a great place to start thinking about how to automate it with AI. One rule of thumb that I think I got from Ethan Mullick is to divide everything you do into a few different buckets. It can be really helpful to decide as an organization, what are the things you really are never going to use AI for? What are the things you're going to always use AI for? And what are the things that are kind of in the middle that you're going to collaborate with AI on? Then as you go back through your documentation, certain things are going to pop out to you as being great candidates for automation. When you identify a step that might be good for automation, you want to think what category does it fall into? Is it something that might be automated with just a simple prompt? Something that might be automated with a complex prompt? Something that may be automated with a series of prompts or a custom GPT? Or is it something that might benefit from some fancier automation? automation. And it's probably best to start small, get one prompt going, get something really working well before you get fancy. Because as I've heard Tim Ferriss say, once you get fancy, fancy gets broken. And I've lived through that many, many times. Another key ingredient in the automation step is to have a handful of example outputs. I can't tell you the number of times I've been working with a client on some sort of AI automation and I say, hey, what is the end goal of this? Can you give me three you know, fairly different examples of a successful output of this system? Hardly anybody's able to deliver that. So once you have something that's a great output, a great example, store that in a library somewhere. It's going to come in handy later on as you're training these AI models on what you're actually aiming towards. I've created a lot of videos about automation. I'll link to a bunch of those in the description. But when you think about my sales process, there's a lot of different steps that could be automated there. A couple ideas that come to mind are scraping the exhibitors off of the conference website and pulling those into a spreadsheet that automatically goes out and searches LinkedIn. You might think about using a tool like make.com to do something like that. There's a module inside of there called API-ify that is really good for looking up things on LinkedIn. You can use that to find the different companies on LinkedIn, find the different CMOs, and then pull in the different information maybe from their about us on their LinkedIn or different things that they've posted. Then you can just think about creating a prompt that pulls in their about me section with your case studies or different things that you might present to them at the conference and mashes that up into a customized cover letter that you can deliver to their booth if they're not around or that you can walk them through if they happen to be around. I'm a visual person, so seeing these systems visually has been really helpful when I think through these different optimization and automation steps. And you can now create some really awesome visuals with these tools. First, you want to get an idea of the style that you're going for. I've found that this prompt, along with Perplexity, yields some really cool results. Let me show you how this works. I'm dropping that right here into Perplexity, and it has pulled together some interesting visuals here. I like this one a lot, so I'm just downloading that. Then inside Claude, I'm going to use this prompt to create an SVG 
in that style. If you have examples that are in your brand colors, etc., you can just use that. So I'm dropping that prompt right in here. I'm attaching that file that we just downloaded. And then I'm just gonna put that process documentation that we created with Claude right in here and run that. And there you go, it's created this awesome SVG. But as you can see, there's a lot of things kind of hanging out over the different edges here. It's not exactly ready for prime time. Here's how we fix that. Use this follow-up prompt, you say, hey, this looks good, but I wanna upload it into Illustrator or Figma and adjust it accordingly. Copy that in. Sometimes you gotta work with it a little bit to get this SVG formatted right and validated right, but once you get it going, you can then upload it directly into Figma and then fine tune it in here or even inside of Adobe Illustrator. And you can then adjust everything exactly how you want it, make it look good, add different um, other images, etc. There is a ton more in the cheat sheet all about this. I really went to town on this cheat sheet. It is well over 20 pages long and includes a ton of things that we weren't able to get into today, including understanding feedback loops, system maintenance and best practices for reviewing and updating your systems. My personal favorite is probably these exercises to improve your system thinking, including ways to use large language models to play system thinking games that were developed by MIT. And there's a great Great book list here about all these different books that can help you improve your system design. So if you're interested in all that, there is a link in the description. Anybody who supports me on Patreon gets access to not only this cheat sheet, but over 124 others. There are some coaching options in there as well. Awesome, I wanna congratulate you on making it through all of this. You've taken a major step forward in applying AI to your job, your department, your entire organization. I think the next step in your AI journey would be to think about strategy and making sure you're growing in the right direction. I've got a video all about that using these powerful AI tools. This is one of my most viewed videos of all time. There's a link to it right here. I'll see you over there. Make your dreams come true.